Hello and welcome to the Grim Dawn Patch 1.2 Starter Builds Showcase. The goal of this video is to present you a wide variety of starter builds with different playstyles and all around great performance that you can play when playing Grim Dawn either for the very first time or when starting a community season. All of these builds in this video are viable from level 1 all the way to 100, can clear the campaign including all dungeons and ultimate, and can farm the Celestial Boss Lokar for the Lokar leveling set. They do not require any hard to get random drops to achieve this, they only use easy and quick to get target farmable items, or faction items, or some super common random drops that can also be substituted easily with whatever you find along your journey. All showcased builds are supported by video build guides, written build guides, or VODs of a full playthrough, all of which present Grim Tools links for every couple of levels. Keep in mind you can check out the skills and devotions in Grim Tools by clicking on the book in the bottom left or by pressing S for skills or D for devotions on your keyboard. You can also hover and click on the gear to check out their affixes and augments, hover over the attributes to see the amount of points invested there and activate slash deactivate temporary buffs in the bottom right. If you instead would like to create your own starter build or just want additional tips, you can check out my Ultimate Grim Dawn Beginner Guide, where I talk about generic tips for build creation and progression. Now then, let us jump into the builds. First one on the list are the Vitality Casters. Dark 1 Vitality Casters feature unparalleled leech, great AoE damage, ramping single target damage and overall good tankiness, making these the best option for the face tank caster archetype. Conjurer, Ritualist, Cabanist and Oppressor are all viable options, with Ritualist probably being the strongest in patch 1.2 and Conjurer being my personal all-time favorite for hardcore. Depending on the class, your main skills are a combination of Sigil of Consumption from Occultist, Ravenous Earth from Necromancer and Corrupted Storm Totems from Shaman. For secondary skills and debuffs, you want a combination of Bloody Pox, Blood Rig, Curse of Reality from Occultist, Spectral Wrath, Siphon Souls, Soul Harvest and Mark of Torment from Necromancer, Devouring Swarm, Grasping Wines and the Winning Good Totem from Shaman, and the Signs of the Rigs, the Converted Guardians from the Oathkeeper Tree. Resistance Reduction being the most important debuff here. Rounding out the skill trees with a combination of buffs like Solar's Witchfire and Possession from Occultist, Spectral Binding and Harbinger of Souls from Necromancer, Mogjogan's Pact from Shaman, and Presence and Virtue and Path of the Three from the Oathkeeper class. The best devotions for this kind of build are Ratosh, Dying God, Wendigo, Bat, either Revenant or Scales of Volkama, and as an additional safety net for hardcore especially, the Turtle Devotion. Items for this build are a combination of the Target Farmable Dark One set alongside Target Farmable Monster Frequents that have skill modifiers for your main abilities. For attributes, make sure to have enough physique to equip armor and shields, enough spirit to equip rings, scepters and offhands, and enough points of the cunning to equip daggers. Any spirit points should go into spirit for damage and energy regeneration. Keep in mind, the more damage you deal, the more you leech. For further information, check out the Vitality Caster Beginner Guide. Next on the list are Two-Handed Promise Strike Shamans, Druid for Ranged and Elementalist slash Warder for Melee. With patch 1.2, Regeneration and also the Ultra set have been buffed quite significantly and synergize well with the Elementalist class now. So Elementalist is arguably even better than Vindicator and Archon or even Warder now for Melee Prime Strike. Prime Strike is an attack speed based skill that cannot proc Buck and Pull skills like Feral Hunger Upheaval and has insane AoE DPS and looks super flashy. For skills, you want to max out the Prime Strike line and brute forces raw damage. Raging Tempest for resistance reduction, and Stormcaller's Pact for percent lightning damage and crit damage. Complement to that with points in McDrogan's Pact, Wendigo Totem Line, and supportive skills from your secondary class, and you are good to go. For devotions, the must haves are Kraken, Widow, and Rowan's Crown. Complement to these with some of the offensive devotions like Korvac, Spear, Hydra, either Viper or Ultos, and Tempest, and some defensive devotions like Turtle, Ghoul. Giant, Chariot, and Crab. The choice of your devotions will heavily depend on your subclass and also your type of sustain that you choose here. For itemization, the only thing that you need to get this build going is either the Ugdenborg Spark Thrower for ranged or the Corvin Storm Halberd for melee. For everything a beginner build needs to do, including Lokar, these weapons combined with some faction gear and whatever you find on the way is good enough. 
for actual endgame content, the random drop ultra set would be what you want to build around eventually, or alternatively, you switch to a totem build and play the Lugigan set on a druid for example. For attributes, make sure to have armor, enough spirit to equip rings, and enough cunning to equip guns if you're playing ranged. Any spare points should go into physique for HP and DA, or into spirit for damage and energy regeneration. Bomberman Demolitionists are arguably the best representation of the Grenadier and fire slash burn cooldown kiting caster archetype. Why even worry about dodging any sundering attacks when you can just nuke your enemies from half a screen away? The core leveling, AoE damage and debuff skill of all variants is the Blackwater Cocktail skill together with self Vigilance Codex. Combine that with either Grenado or Canister Bomb and their respective items as well as Fireball components or the Configuration Relic and you have yourself a great starter build that scales nicely into endgame. For second class I suggest Arcanist for cooldown reduction from Star Pact, offensive ability from Inner Focus and Overload, defensive utility from Mirror Nullification as well as Poseidon Absorption from Maven Sphere of Protection making a Sorcerer class. Or alternatively Oathkeeper for critical strike damage from Divine Mandate and more importantly resistance reduction from Celestia Presence making a Sheepbreaker class which is generally the more damage oriented option. For Devotions, Solaris Witchblade, Magi and Torch offer insane offense while Behemoth, Chariot, Phoenix, Turtle and also Dryad offer great defensive sustain options. While being strong enough for all content up to low car, for actual endgame this build can nicely transition into either a Pyrans or Ulzuin set build or into many of the Grenado variants built around for example Cindercore or Adversary. For attributes make sure to have enough physique to equip armor, enough spirit to equip rings and offhands and enough points into cunning to equip daggers. Any spare points should either go into spirit for damage and energy regeneration or into physique for overall tankiness. Warlord, or also Borlord as it's sometimes called, is a ridiculously tanky combination of Soldier and Oathkeeper that most of the time leads to rather boring builds. However, the Blitz Warlord is the exact opposite. It can blitz around the battlefield while dishing out insane burst damage and having insane tankiness as well. Especially now in 1.2 with the regeneration buffs you can go for a very nice regeneration setup here as well. You will have to level through Act 1 with Force Wave, but once you get Warden's Creek Shield and Milton's Cask, you are ready to blitz around. Max out Blitz and Field Command for damage while maxing out Minhir's Bulwark and Veterancy for health regeneration. Get a couple of points in all the useful passives and then get points in the Old Keeper skill tree. Here you want to max out Safeguard, Presence of Virtue, Rebuke, Shattering Smash and Celestial Presence while getting some one pointers into all other useful skills. Righteous Fervor, Procking Shattering Smash is your filler skill that helps out with providing more consistent single target damage while you press Blitz every time it's off cooldown to ridiculous burst damage. For Devotions, I'll suggest you to go primarily for defense since 1.2 offers insane values via health regeneration and you'll still have enough burst damage via Blitz. Pick up Assassin's Blade, Turtle, Behemoth, Bear, Light of Empyrean and Tree of Life. Using Light of Empyrean and Shattering Smash also means you do not have to bother using Soldier's War Cry since neither damage reduction nor flash resistance reduction stack. For gear, complement Milton's Cask and Warden's Fortress with Goddess Rings, Bloodbriar's Thorn Amulet, Wendigo Glare Metal, Ugdenborg Girdle Belt, the Rexact Leg Guards, and the Totally Normal Shield. Fill out the remaining slots with whatever you find or gear from the faction quartermasters and make sure to get the Juggernaut Relic Blueprint from Hiram in Steelcap District. For attributes, make sure to put as many points in Physique and Spirit to equip all of your gear and then dump every single other point into Cunning. Cunning stacking makes sure you have good damage and you have enough offensive ability to crit your enemies, which is crucial on any physical build due to proccing Assassin's Blade. No one zooms around to Cairn as quickly as Virus Might Skaters. This build combines good AoE damage, ramping single target damage, with literally the best mobility in the entire game. However, it starts out a little bit slow in Act 1 and 2, and you should level probably with the secondary class first. Either Arcanist or Demolitionists, since Oathkeeper is in my opinion the worst early game starter class. For Demolitionists you can play Black of the Cocktail, and for Arcanist you can play Olaxia's Flash Freeze and Calidar's Tempest. 
combine either class with Fireball from the Searing Ember component. For factions you need to absolutely make sure to pick the Order of the Death's Vigil for this build, otherwise you cannot get your build defining items. Once you get Zarthusadan's Archive in Act 2 and Skybreaker's Circlet in Act 3, you can switch over to Virusmite and max out Volcanic Stroid. This skill will from now on carry you all the way to endgame. Pick up Presence of Virtue, the Guardians of Empyreon, Divine Mandate, and if you are a Templar, Judgment, alongside One Pointers in Resilience and Ascension and Oathkeeper, and Flashbang, Blackwater Cocktail, Flame Touched, Blast Shield, Vindictive Flame, and Thermite Mines and Demolitionist, or Inner Focus, Overload, Mirror, Mavens, Notification, and One Pointers and couple other passives in the Arcana tree. For Devotions, you want to combine stacking Volcanic Stride with Imp's Aether Fire for damage, and get Solar's Witchfire for resistance reduction. For Defense and Regeneration, you want to get Behemoth, Scythe, Turtle, Dryad, Light of Empyrean, and the Tree of Life. For Items, you get South Luzidon's Archive and Skywalker Circlet to enable the build, and then complement those with Chains of Orders, Endurance Relic, Living Ring, or Gargaboy Ring, and the quest reward, Blaze Heart. For Endgame, you want to get your hands on the Target Farmable Vanquisher set or the random drop Shot of the Eternal Flame to further reduce the Kuno of Virus Might. For all other slots, use Faction Gear or whatever you find, and for Attributes, make sure you have enough Spirit to equip your Offhand, enough Cunning to equip a Dagger, and enough Physique to equip all other armor in the game. Any other spare points should be put into Spirit for damage and energy regeneration. Arguably the best and most beginner-friendly bleed build out there, the Blade Spirit Trickster. High damage over time in a decent area of effect, which also stacks to ridiculous numbers on single target while standing in a safe distance from enemies. Being a mix between a dot caster and a player skilled pet build, this build is excellent for a kiting playstyle due to bleeding damage stacking from each Blade Spirit. After going through Act 1 with Shaman's Devouring Swarm and Grasping Wines, you want to get to the Scarab Shell from the Beatles and Forgotten Gods and then instantly rush to Blade Spirits and the Nightblade Tree. Respect some points out of the Shaman Tree if necessary. Blade Spirits and Devouring Swarm are gonna carry this build all the way to endgame and can be complemented by maxing out Circle of Slaughter, Dramatic Burst, Anatomy of Murder, and putting points into Phantasma Blades, Shadow Strike, Weight of Shadow, Blade Barrier, and Phantasmal Armor and the Nightblade Tree, as well as points into Mog Jogan's Pact, Wendigo Totem, and Primal Bond from the Shaman Tree. For Devotions, get Falcon early for additional AoE and bleed damage and Dryad for healing. Then aim for Huntress, Scales of Akama, Mog Jogan, and Unknown Soldier. You can also try fitting in Turtle on top, but that probably means you will have to sacrifice some points in Unknown Soldier. For gear, complement your Scarab Shell with Gutworm's Mark Medal, Bloodbrass Thorn Amulet, Wendigo Claw, Dreek or Solana Sacked Pants, Gargoyle's Wasteguard, or any of the faction belts giving you plus one to all skills in Nightblade. Slaughter Relic, and fill out the rest with faction gear and whatever you find. Mammoth's Blade Seal, for example, is an amazing faction ring that helps you pushing Blade Spirits to at least 24 out of 16 points. At 24 points and higher, you gain 3 instead of 2 Blade Spirits, increasing your bleed damage from them by 50%. For attributes, make sure to have enough physique to equip armor and the shield, enough spirit to equip rings and put everything else into cunning. Cunning scales your offense, as well as your percent bleeding damage, and Nightblade's anatomy of murder is superb for cunning stacking. For those of you that rather want to let your pets do the killing, this bleed slash physical Briarthorn Conjurer is arguably the easiest and most beginner friendly way to play through Grim Dawn with a pet build. The Briarthorn is not quite as great as the Necromancer Skeletons in the early game, but it's beefy enough to stay relevant throughout the entire game all the way to Celestial Bosses. Start out in Act 1 by putting points into Summon Familiar and use a maxed out Raven with a Lightning Strike to carry you through Act 1 and 2. In Act 3, after getting Zarya's Pendant and Bloodsworn Codex, switch over to Briarthorn as your main pet and only one point Hellhound and Raven so they can help stacking bleed damage on bosses and provide their auras to the Briarthorn. For resistance reduction, get Curse of Reality and Devouring Swarm. For permanent auras, get Mogrogan's Pact line, Bonds of Bismir line, 
and Prana Bond and for healing as well as physical and poison resistance, get the Blood of Dreek and the Wendigo Totem. Use the Prime Spirit pet only when facing bosses for additional damage. For devotions, get the Shepherd's Crook ASAP and then work on getting Bismir's Bonds for an additional pet and resistance reduction. Falcon Swoop for bleeding damage, that scales with your pet's damage when attached to your pet, Huntress for resistance reduction, Behemoth for healing, Mogdrogan the Wolf for huge overall pet buffs, and, if you want to play a bit more physical focused, try to fit an Assassin's Blade on top for more physical resistance reduction. For gear, complement Zarya's Pendant and Bloodsworn Codex with Salazar's Blade, Spectral Crown, Bloodsworn Signet Rings, Winnego Gaze Metal, the Ancestor Relic, Kraval's Shoulder Pads, and a belt with plus one to your masteries and pet stats, like for example Lunar Valgoth's Girdle or Puppet Master Links. Fill out the rest with Paction Gear, which is really, really good for a pet build, and whatever you find. For endgame, you can farm the Heart of Sand King Amulet and try to get your hands on the Beast Scholar set. Inspired by the classic Diablo 2 Aura Den, this build tries to stack as many auras as possible, starting out by combining Inquisitor's Aura of Censure and Oathkeeper's Heart of Wrath while throwing fireballs against tougher enemies for additional Sangue target damage. Complement your aura skills with Guardians of Empyrean, Presence of Virtue, Ascension, Virus Might, Resilience, and Safeguard from Oathkeeper, as well as Word of Renewal, Deadly Aim, and Inquisitor's Seal from the Inquisitor Tree. For devotions, you wanna get Rowan's Crown, Solar's Witchfire, Magi, and Torch for offense, as well as Behemoth, Phoenix, Bat, Turtle, or Chariot for defense and sustain. For gear, aura builds tend to be a little bit more gear dependent than other builds on this list, since items like Scarab Carapace, Fleshwalk Defender, Mark of the Shadow Queen, Horns of Ekazul, Tainted Ruby of Gardal, and the Rune Armor of Ignafaur are a noticeable part of your damage via either supporting your existing auras or adding additional damage auras on top. For attributes, make sure to have enough physique to equip armor and shields, enough spirit to equip rings and offhands, and enough points and cunning to equip daggers. Any spare points should go into spirit for damage and energy regeneration or into physique for overall tankiness. For actual endgame, you can easily use this build to transition into any of the numerous Fire Paladin builds that you can find on the forums. This build is the perfect fit for anybody wanting to play a two-handed ranged sniper, with very high single target damage alongside decent AoE via piercing projectiles that pass through enemies on Cadence, Solent's Technique and Shooting Rounds which will reward you for positioning well. Start out by grabbing a 2 hit gun and putting points into Cadence, Solon's Technique and Fighting Form to get single target damage and pass through. Alternatively, you can start Act 1 as a caster with Word of Pain or Stormbox before respecking into Cadence and Weapon Pool skills for an easier time early on. After that, get Field Command, Squad Tactics and Deadly Momentum maxed out and couple of pointers into the passives and Weapon Pool skills in the Soldier Tree and max out Ranged Expertise, Steel Resolve, Death Sentence, Inquisitor's Seal, Horn of Gander, and the Aura of Conviction in the Inquisitor Tree while getting a couple of points in useful passives and weapon pool skills. As with all weapon pool skill builds, try to hit a combined value of 100% for your weapon pool skills eventually, but don't go over 100%. You can only proc one weapon pool skill at a time, and going over 100% combined chance will reduce the percentage to proc your best weapon pool skill in this case, Zolhan's Technique. For Devotions, you want Kraken, Hydra, Assassin's Blade, Ulzad and Azraka for damage, Scales of Vulkama for resistance reduction, and Turtle, Dryad or Ghoul for defense. For items, the core that gets the build going is the Ugdenborg Bolt Thrower. Add Gutworm's Mark Metal, Mogara's Fangs Amulet, Drig or Solar Sect Pants, Dragonaut Relic, and fill out the rest with whatever you find or faction gear. For attributes, you want to get as much physique and spirit that you need to equip armor and rings, and put all other remaining points into cunning for offensive ability and percent pierce damage. For endgame, you can keep your eyes open for the mythical Valdun set. As a super fast dual wield melee character with exceptional single target damage, this Reaper slash Spellbreaker features a classic melee assassin slash rogue gameplay. 
It's definitely not the safest character and requires some skill to play, but once mastered, this is a ton of fun and one of my favorite build archetypes in all of Grim Dawn. For the second class, Necromancer features higher damage through the flat damage from Soul Harvest and more leech via Harbinger of Souls, and also its additional weapon pool skills makes it easier for you to hit that sweet 100% weapon pool skill chance. Defense can be a little bit iffy on this class, but Ill Omen and Mark of Torment, when used properly proactively, are really good. Arcanist, on the other hand, provides better utility via nullification and higher offensive ability for easier crits via inner focus and overload. For defense, Maven Sphere and Mirror are just amazing. The core devotions for this build are Rumor and Rowan's Crown. Other devotions depend a bit on the secondary class as well as the current meta and your gear. Great devotions to aim for are Amatok, Leviathan, Yugol, Ultos, Crab, Chariot, Turtle and Ghoul. For faction choice, it is absolutely important to choose Kaiman's Chosen on this build, which means that you need to play a solo Nightblade until Homestead if you are a Reaper. Necromancers cannot side with Kaiman's Chosen. This choice is important in order to get specific gear that is otherwise unobtainable. For gear, the most important thing is to get good weapons and use Cold Stone and the Shard of Baranoth component. Great weapons are Spectral Longsword, Spectral Battle Axe, Makadar's Dreadblade, Chill Strife and Locksmere's Frostblade. Complement these with Elena's Necklace, Gargoyle Wasteguard, Igor's Eternal Vigil Medal, Solar's Sect Pants, Death Chill Relic and a Death's Whisper Hood if you are a Reaper. For all other slots, use Faction Gear or whatever you find. For Attributes, as this is a rather squishy build, you want to try to compensate by putting almost all of your points into Physique. But don't forget to put enough points into Cunning to equip Swords and enough points into Spirit for Rings. Once you feel more comfortable, you can also start putting more points into Spirit for damage. For Endgame, you can farm the Steps of Torment dungeon for Alchemos's rings or his two-hander Sorend, and also the Tomb of the Heretic dungeon for Morgonath's set, the Armor of the Eternal Knight. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to check out and expand the description below for Grim Trolls links and related playlists. Shout out to all of my supporters on Patreon, YouTube and Twitch. Without you guys, this channel wouldn't even exist. If you are new to this channel and you like my content, feel free to like, subscribe and head over to my Patreon to support me. All of your support will be used to create more Grim Dawn guides on YouTube like this, as well as additional Grim Dawn content for the upcoming community seasons. If you haven't heard of or played a community season yet, you can do so at any point, even when it's offline, via the website grimdawnleague.com. I hope you enjoy the content and I'll see you around on the next one.